The key thing around backing yourself is you need high levels of self-belief, you need high levels of self-trust, and you need high levels of self-promotion. Now, we're not talking about reaching that, that level of, I'm, you know, I must be excellent at this or therefore I never back myself. No, that's BS as well. It's that thing to, to work towards having that capacity to have self-belief, to have self-trust, and to have, have that ability for self-promotion. And yes, it is. Self, 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 right? <laughs> One of our good mates in New Zealand, he's, he's actually from the UK, Paulio. And he always does that. You know, we talk, say something about whatever we're doing and he goes, ah, there you go again. Self, self, self. And it is. Because if we can't have that self-belief, if we can't trust ourselves and we're not able to promote ourselves, even to ourselves, who the hell else is going to do it? And why do we think anyone else could, should, would. So remember these types of things about self-belief, that ability to jump in here and believe our awesomeness, that ability to jump in here and trust ourselves and go, hmm, there's the unknown factor here. Um, <laughs> and there's usually a gap when we talk about trust. And then there's that ability to self-promote. And that's that thing to find all our goods and not feel arrogant, not feel boastful, and not feel egotistical about sharing that information with people as well. Good time, Chris. Yeah, hi, Chris. <laughs> it's, it's awesome because often we think we need to keep doing stuff out there. We need to keep, keep doing this and doing that and learning this and putting this in place and following that process. And, and yes, this is a little bit of a process as well. Mm -hmm. But it all starts with self. Absolutely about how do I back myself? Mm -hmm. I need to be really confident and believe that I've got the goods. And that doesn't mean that 100% of the time we have to believe that. It doesn't mean that we've got the goods in every single situation. Because as we've, we've taught many times, it's like things that we go into out of our comfort zone, we've never been there before. So how could we know what we're doing? How could we have that massive amount of, of understanding and belief in ourselves, even when we're doing something for the first time or doing something totally out of our comfort zone. So these ways of totally believing in yourself mm. that you've got the goods to, to work it out. So I know that, that for me, I've been thinking about how on earth am I going to find a way through certain things in my life? And then my coach was saying recently, she was going, you know, have you ever worked anything else out before? And it was like, yeah, I always work something out. <laughs> and she goes, well, there you go. So you can have that belief in yourself that you can work it out. You don't have to know how, mm -hmm. but with that self-belief and trusting yourself, that deep-seated trust, you can absolutely know that I, I can find a way. I can find a way through this, I can keep going, and I can find a way. And then once we get those first two things nice and solid, then the self-promotion just falls into place and it's natural and it's absolutely awesome. And that's the bit that you need to, to kind of bridge that gap, to, to share that, to have it going forward, to have it going out to other people, because otherwise we will stay totally within ourselves. So we want ourselves to be really strong, and then we need that, bridge to also go out to other people and have a massive impact on other people cool 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 right. Oops, I've been on to that. oh yeah I might not do it. <laughs> so what is self-belief mm. mm. <laughs> the cool things around this is yep state the obvious believing in self <laughs> now when we talk about this it's that bit to go do I, do I accept all of myself? Do I believe that, you know, I can actually do something here? It's that thing of, am I actually able to accomplish things? Accomplish, achieve, complete, do stuff. All work of that out. goes together. Work it out yeah. is, is all of that stuff. And that's the thing where we often get stuck. And people who have that ability to go, don't know how. Okay, the how's going to catch up. Um, I know that I can do this. And if I look at it, I can go, okay, there's this thing and there's this thing. Then we start being realistic about it. 
And it's not getting so caught up in the rational and irrational side of it. It's identifying it for what it is, the realistic situation you are in. And this is, this is a difference because it's really easy for us to get caught up in our negative thought and then it will be irrational because then you've got this BS that's going, no, it's this. Oh my God, it's going to get worse. And then this happens too. And then do you remember last time? <laughs> and when that person, they did it and it turned out, you're like, yep, shush. What's the realistic situation sitting in front of my face right here, right now? It's this. Okay, cool. When we're optimistic, and optimistic is that you know that it will turn out all right. It will get good, it will be good, and it will turn out okay. When you have that optimistic belief, that is when you know that you're going to have that ability to have self-belief. Mm. You have that acceptance of self. You have that thing where you go, okay, cool. So optimism is that ability to go, I know it is going to work out. I know it is going to be okay. I don't freaking well know how right here, right now, but I will damn well do something and I will freaking well work it out. And if I can't work it out, I'm going to find someone else that can work it out for me or with me. Yeah. And while you're doing that, you're accepting yourself to go, yeah, yeah I'm not sure how I'm going to do this, but you don't get caught up in the negative negativity and go to the garden and eat worms. You're able to sit there with a realistic view. So it's that ability to be optimistic and realistic. And that key point there, <laughs> if nothing else that you take away from tonight, is that ability for self-belief is to be able to create a feeling of certainty. And that comes from optimism and hope. Mm -hmm. So you're able to create a feeling of certainty and that comes from optimism and hope. Mm -hmm. Because you go, I know it is going to work out okay, work out okay, and you have it in here and in here and everywhere else, mm. and that's that feeling of certainty. Human beings love certainty. We love to know mm. that we can be certain about things. We love to know that things are definitely going to happen or not happen. We want to know that. Later, how do you get openly comfortable with doing the problem solving when you're not convinced other people see or value your skills? Mm. Ooh, yes. I like. Yes, because it's that certainty of things. Definitely a good question to come to. Yeah. Come to you later. Come, come to, to you later. Come back to that one. Yep. Yeah, that's awesome. Freaking cool, man. Good question. So so it it all starts with our self-belief. And yes, people might shoot us down, mm. not understand us, and absolutely we need to be able to have the skills and ability to work with that <laughs> and to take the sting out of that and to continue doing and being who mm. we are going forward and that's why one of the things is is one of the the um, fundamental things that we do is we celebrate our accomplishments mm -hmm. because it's something really small and tangible that helps boost our self-belief just like oh yeah I was like today I was just saying to Christine at the beginning of this I presented at an international conference with it with some of my group on a study and we had the convener from the US we had a presenter from the UK and we had other presenters from Australia and we all got together at 8 a.m this morning and <laughs> presented <laughs> and it was awesome and it's like th that was an accomplishment that was really cool I haven't presented in a conference for over a year because of COVID. <laughs> and it was like, yeah, I did that. And when we recognize and acknowledge our accomplishments, we are going, yeah, okay, I believe in myself. That's awesome. Another little notch, another little strength of the bow, another, another moment and uh, evidence that we've got this. Now, for me to create certainty, my life has been filled with fear right from when I was a little kitty. And so from lots of little um, situations and circumstances and things, and it was like I was totally fear-driven. And that's something that I've been working on for the last 10 years or so. And within that, I had to develop some certainty around my ability to, to be me my ability to go through situations and come out the other side, my ability to go, there has to be a way through this. I do have what it takes, even if I don't know how to do it right now. 
And so that's that deep seated feeling of certainty. Mm. I don't know how I'm going to accomplish and achieve and do so many things, even tomorrow, let alone next week or next year or the next 20 years of my life. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I have this absolute belief that I'm going to find a way, that I'm going to work it through, that I'm going to get the right people around me and the right team around me. I'm going to get the right information. I'm going to have the right mindset. I'm going to be able to find a way to go through. I know that. And so that deep-seated certainty is about your self-belief. Mm. It's a good, Flind is bringing it up about, you know, we, this, we can't be certain about anything. Human beings want certainty in the fact that we want to know that something will or won't happen. And we tend to do that, you know, like it's, it comes on those beliefs that we're set up with too. And I can guarantee you that there's always a way and I'll fucking make it happen because I know that I just know that and that's the way it is so I have that certainty just you know like Elizabeth was, was sort of going through as well and it's these things that like, each of you have have things in your life that you are certain about and you are uncertain about and that's where we that's where we identify this thing about certainty because it becomes that thing of going when I know I have certainty in a certain area um, it can be you know for each of you on here is you've got certain strengths that you that you play each day you've got certain capacity certain ability certain skills certain talents that you engage in and it's this type of stuff is that you know that you can be certain that you're going to be able to follow through with that there'll be other things that you might not know about so you won't have that certainty you might have uncertainty we can go into a totally new situation it's like people coming in and doing these programs it's like they have got no idea what is going to happen next? They have their own idea of what they think is going to happen, you know, and then there's that ability to go, oh, I don't know. I, I really don't know. I'm quite uncertain about it. And that's okay. And then there's other bits where they're certain that they know they can cope with it. They're certain that they know they can learn it. They're certain that if that thing pops up, I pull out this, this, this. If that thing pops up, mm, I haven't learned that yet. Not sure. What do you think I might do? So these are the these are the kind of things that we wrestle with. And I think the thing or the whole thing around certainty or not is that I'm not certain about what is going to happen. Because mm, I don't know the outcome. Yeah. I'm not invested in the result. I'm invested in the, the process of my ability to get to the result. And so that's what I'm certain about. I have a certainty that I will find a way through I have a certainty that I will when I need to recognize the next step mm. not 20 steps ahead but the next step and so that's what I'm certain about not that I'm certain of it's going to work out like a b and c and I'm going to have this and I'm going to do this and blah, blah, blah. I don't know all that <laughs> Yeah. Mm. And so it's the certainty about my approach. Yep. Yeah. My decisions. decision making, just like you just said, Chris. It's it's that I have the goods inside me, even mm. if I have to blow them off, dig a little bit and find them. It's like our cookie jars for those people mm. who have done the Your Authentic Self eight week program. It's your cookie jars. You've got the ability to div it, dive into the cookie jar and get your metaphorical cookie and go, I can do this because I've been through shit before. I've been through amazing stuff before. I've been through unknown times before, and I'm certain that I can do this. Now, what would it take to take the next little step? Okay. See how the certainty breeds the optimism. It brings in the realistic approach to things. You accept, you have that acceptance of yourself to go, I'm certain about this. Hmm. Okay, not so sure about that particular one. And that might create a little bit of uncertainty and that's okay. So we always have these moments. And then knowing that you have this ability to jump inside and go, okay, I've done something similar to this before and I know it worked out okay. So start connecting the dots, start linking things, start finding the similarities between what you've done before and what's coming up in front of your face now. And then you can create a level of certainty. Mm. Mm. So this, 
this thing about the realism, the optimism, the acceptance of yourself as to who you are right here, right now. What are you capable of right here, right now? And then you have that ability to create a feeling of certainty. Mm. I can get good. Of course you can. You got this good, so you can get more good. <laughs> All right. Real good England, but you can get more good, right? Yeah. You can get good at. You can get good at. And these are the kind of things to identify with. It's like, yes, I can learn this. I learned that. Yeah. So there's no reason why I can't learn something new. Exactly. And so these are the ways to look at it is to have that realistic approach, be really optimistic because you know it is going to turn out good. It's going to turn out okay. You're going to get through it. And it doesn't mean that I don't have shaky moments. Nah. Of course not. It doesn't mean that there's something that's like, oh, oh my gosh, this is this is big. This is a bit tougher than than I've sort of expected. And it's like, oh, it's just sort of knocking me sideways a wee bit. And then I go back to who I be. I was like, no, I've got this. I've got the goods inside me. I know that I can find a way. What do I need to do next? The one little step next. And it links Love it. totally to what my thoughts are. Bum, you said bum, mindset. Bum. I think it was Flinders. Or Flinders, or, yeah. Yeah, Flinders. Yeah. You talked about mindset just in your comments there. Absolutely. It is, it is about mindset. Not tied to that end outcome result. Knowing where I'm going, mm. but I don't know how I'm going to get there because there's so many things that are uncertain. Like 2020 was totally uncertain. Sideswipe for everybody in the world. I was like, we don't know where we're going to go for that. But if we think we can, or you think you can't, you're absolutely right. Wonderful, wonderful quote from Henry Ford. It's, it's the number one thing to remember is that you are in control of your thoughts. And, and that's that bit that comes from self-belief because your self-belief is all about you controlling your thoughts. For me to have self-belief, for me to believe in myself, I have to be able to create those thoughts to go, hey, I am good. I can get gooder. <laughs> hey, I might not know how, but I know this and this. And this is all your own thoughts doing this stuff. Chris, like you said before, it's the problem-solving bit. Mm. And this is, this is where it stems from, is that ability to go, do I think I can do this? Optimism, hope. I know I can do it. Okay, cool, sweet. Tick that fucking box. And you have that ability right then and there to go, okay, cool, I think I can. See the little red engine as well. <laughs> I think I can, I think I can. Of course he did. You know, and it's this kind of stuff. Is It's a thought, therefore it comes from your mindset. And if you really want to go simple, 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 that's all it is. It's a thought that says, yeah, I think I can do it. Mm. Okay, cool, let's go and do it. Mm. And then you create the certainty around that. Cool, cool. This sometimes can be an easier way to understand of going, okay, so what, what is, what's self-belief not? Or what's low levels of self-belief? What isn't self-belief? What isn't self-belief? Yeah, that. <laughs> You've got good England. Got England two days. <laughs> <laughs> talking all about it. <laughs> so the thing here is to go, okay, cool. Now, some of you will go, oh, I do that. Oh, ouch, I do that too. Oh, I do shit. all of these. I do that too. I do all cool, of these. Oh, good. We all do at different times. What we want to identify is that these get less mm. of what we do and the other bits get more of who we be. Okay? So when we look at it, it's like, you know, if you have frequent negative self-talk in your head, if you're like, oh, I can't do that. Oh, I could never do that. Oh, there's no way I can do that. Oh, oh nah. No, they, they're better than me. Oh, no, I better not. You know, and, and this is this whole thing of this negative self-talk. It is a thought. <laughs> that is all it is. It is a thought that then comes out of your gob. And because it goes in your head and comes out your gob lots, it becomes a belief. And a belief is a thought that we have not questioned yet. Just question it. Is what, that true? Exactly. One of the coolest things I was watching today is this cool, cool video. And it was this dude. Not the chair one. No, not that. <laughs> Not the bobo jab, no. <laughs> I had the AZ. Um, anyway, so <laughs> so this dude was talking about it, it was really cool. Talking to this chick, and she's like, Oh, my mum, like, she she always he went around there for a for a leg of lamb. This gonna have a roast, and she's like, Cool. So she chopped off the end of the, the roast, and he was like, 
why did you chop off the end of the legal lamb? And she goes, because that's what my mum does. Oh, okay. Should we call your mum? Yeah, okay, cool. So they called her mum on Zoom. Mum, so this is good. Why, why did you always chop the end of the lamb? You know, like you chopped the end off the leg of lamb. Well, your grandma always did it. And the guy's like, so why did she do it? Um, well, she just always did it. So we just copied it. Okay, cool. Should we ring here? Yeah, okay, cool. <laughs> hey, Nana Nana. Um, you When you cook that leg of lamb, you always chop the end off it. Why did you chop the end off it? Well, because the stove that we had was too small. Um, so fucking two generations later, monkey see, monkey do. All right. And this is the same kind of thing. There's so many things of this that we do and see. We just copy. We do not question. All right. There are so many things that we do with it. It's the same as, you know, I cook things and I'm like, I'm just thinking now, uh, I should probably question that shit. And it's the same kind of thing because that's the way mum used to do it. And I'm sure it was the way her mum did it too. We see other people do things or we hear stuff, so we copy it and we think, oh, okay, that's the way we do it. It's a thought that we have. So we believe it. And therefore that becomes our way of being. Mm. Question your beliefs, question these thoughts. Yes. If you're engaging in frequent negative self-talk, question it. And, and that's, that's one of the strongest keys yeah. there to shift, to shift out of that whole thing of low levels of, self -talk, uh, low levels of self belief. And the first question is, is it true? Oh, is it, it absolutely true 100% of the time? So that's the first thing to... Number one question, is it those. true? Yep, absolutely. Yep, monkey brain. Yeah, it is. <laughs> monkey brain and monkey brain. It so is. <laughs> hey, you've flipped it over to the other one. Whoopsie. <laughs> we haven't finished. There we go. <laughs> so the second one that we, we can see when we've got low levels of self-belief is that we're always ignoring achievements. So this is the opposite of what we said, recognizing your accomplishments, that what you're capable of. So if we ignore them constantly, we will end up with lower levels of self-belief because we're just going, oh, yeah, whatever. Oh, yeah, whatever. That's just what I do. Oh, yeah, whatever. Mm. I was like, oh, yeah. Mm. yeah, it's just part of the job all those things that people say to themselves. So it's like, no, let's keep celebrating our accomplishments, no matter how little they are, how big they are. You don't have to have this massive, big, huge recognition party for something that took you five minutes, but recognize that you did it. It was like, yeah, I've been putting right. that off for two weeks. It was like, that's actually really cool. I've done it. It only took me five minutes and I've been putting it off for two weeks. Woohoo, go to me. Woo, I'm feeling so proud of myself. Celebrate your achievements, mm. don't ignore them. If we constantly think that people are better than <sighs> us, then it continues to erode yep. our self-belief. And it's a, it's a wonderful, wonderful indicator, not in a judgment way, but it's a wonderful indicator of seeing other people when they talk about themselves. It's like, oh, yeah, but I can't do that because they're better than that. Oh, yeah, I did this, but the report isn't really that good because blah. Oh, yeah, but la, la, la. And they keep putting themselves down. And this is obviously one of the indicators of poor self-belief. Yeah. So when we recognize this in ourselves or other people, let's start bringing these things through by questioning our thoughts or potentially questioning their thoughts gently. Yeah, do it. If they say, oh, but I could never do that because it's just too hard. It was like, have you ever done anything like that before? Is that true? What if you did it that much instead of that much? Hmm. What if you gave it a go? What if, you know, and ask these questions. So we begin to help them question as well. And when we hear other people going, oh, but that's better than me. No, no, no. It was like, let's celebrate accomplishments. Let's question our own thoughts. Yep. and gently help others to begin questioning the negative self-talk. And let's look at celebrating accomplishments, not ignoring them. Mm. My team at work at, at Monash, when I work at, the, um, at Monash University for part of the week, they are so used to me now going, woohoo, that's so cool! Because they used to go, oh yeah, and I had another paper submitted, blah, 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 and everybody's just like, oh yeah, whatever. <laughs> I was like, that's so cool, that's awesome, that's so cool, 
And so they're used to me doing this mm. and now they do it more. They do it with each other. It's awesome. And it's all about our self-belief, not about ego and arrogance. It's about self-belief. So the other part is that we often get worried about making mistakes or letting people down. Mm. And if we constantly say this in our heads, if we constantly do these actions that show ourselves that was like, oh, I can't do that. Oh, those good old procrastinators and perfectionists, they're just scared, fearful about making a mistake or letting others down. Hmm. And so we can bust through that because that's linking to self-belief. And when we look at these things here that are contributing to low levels of self-belief and put the other ones in place that we just went through, then you can, bit by bit, strengthen your self-belief mm. and take it up from those lower levels by the simple acts of questioning your thoughts, recognizing your accomplishments, challenging those things that other people are better than me, and by not worrying about mistakes or letting others down and changing that mindset around. So if you if you recognize yourself in some of these comments or all of these comments, it is okay. Yes. And we do it from time to time. And you might find that there'll be a situation where you're like, oh, those people are way better than me at doing this. Or blah, blah, blah. Come back to the point of being realistic and optimistic. Realistic. I'm new at this. Therefore, they probably are better than you. And that's good. Yeah. Because then you're hanging out with the right freaking people to learn off, aren't you? Yes. So it's this kind of stuff is in your questioning what is happening at that point in time. Mm. You're being realistic, not talking about rational or irrational because it's just stupid. You're talking about the realism of what's actually happening from an optimistic point of view. Yes, I can get good. Yes, I will learn. I know I will be able to get good. And it's this kind of stuff to then go, huh. So they would have been at that stage too, yeah. And as cheesy as that might sound sometimes, it's these types of things that we say to ourselves can go, oh, so I don't need to be worried about making mistakes. No, because mm -hmm. that's how you learn. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So I won't let them down because I am a beginner or this is new to me or I've never been in this situation before. Yeah, you're right. Oh. And when we think that we're letting other people down, get this. Parting is on, ears on. When we think that we're letting other people down, who are we really scared of letting down at that point? Self, self, self. Self, self, self. self, self. <laughs> well, always about self. It is. When we get worried and we're like, oh my God, I'm going to make a mistake. Oh my God, I'm going to let these people down. No, you just worried you're letting yourself down. That's all it is. You just worried you're letting yourself down. And what's cropping up at that point in time? 